Hello beautifuls, my name is Coivier, I'm the creator of Juju Time. In this video, we're going to be talking about divination. Um, talking about my thoughts in regards to divination tools and using them. Um, and also some tips that I've learned um, along my own journey of divining for myself, divining for others, and yeah all of that good stuff and hopefully there's some tips um, or some concepts that will allow you to make space to contemplate to contemplate so yeah let's get started Alrighty, so I have my notes here so that way I can one, stay focused and two, mention everything that I've been wanting to mention um, in regards to divination. So if you see me just looking down, it's just because I'm just keeping track of um, the points I want to make. Uh, so first and foremost, I was contemplating how to start this video, right? I was contemplating, okay, how do I just go right into this um and i first realized that i probably should get into um how i view my divination tools what's the mindset that when i am about to divine for myself or for others it doesn't matter what's my view of the tool itself right because um, I've been divining for others and for myself. Well, it started off just with myself, um, but um, I've been doing this for quite some time now. And um, it's always been quite curious to me about how people view their divining tool itself. Like what level of importance of significance, um, etc. So, for myself, the tool that you know, your divination tool is just that it's a tool, it's a way to communicate between you and the unseen, right? You and spirit, you and God, you and your ancestors, um, however, way. Um, that you choose to communicate with them is of course up to you right there's tarot cards oracle cards pendulums um there's shells there's playing cards there's sticks there's stones there's bones there's the wind there's the air there's the leaves the trees um it all it, there's water you know like there's just so many ways to communicate with the unseen okay and so for myself i view the tool as just a tool as just a way to communicate um there are some people that it, at least for myself it appears as though like the tool itself is an entity of itself um uh, however from my own experience it's never felt that way right um it's always felt as as i said just um the paper and the pen you know it's just the tool to communicate um now this is not to say that the tool is not important because the tool itself is important and for many cultures depending on what the divination tool is um it is very major in being a vehicle of structure of being um a vehicle of having spiritual significance to the culture to the spiritual culture itself you know um because you know it has 
symbols that's been passed down. It's There's markings that has been passed down that have a specific meaning and that meaning has not changed and it will never change, right? Um, the two that I thought of just from my own um, spiritual practice uh, within the Afro diasporic and African religious modalities that are out there is with Ifa or Afa and cowrie shells. Like these are very specific, and these and the way that you divine, I mean, even to divine, especially with um, Ifa or Afa, um, even to divine in this kind of way is sacred there's uh you have to study it you you know you have to be taught it and it's rigorous it's it's basically a priesthood um and a priestesshood within itself you know so um and in, in this kind of way it's not to diminish that um, the tool is just the tool, but the tool is a vehicle. The tool is the paper, the pen, you know. Um, so when I speak of, in this video, when I speak of divining, um, that is the concept that I am coming from, is the fact that for me and for my experience, um, it's a tool. It's a way for me to communicate with my spirits. For myself, because how I view my divination tools, um, I know exactly who I'm communicating with. I view my divination tools as such due to the fact that I know that there are specific spirits that I want to speak with specific spirits within my spiritual court that um, assist me um, in divination. Because of how I view my divination tools as just tools, as just a way to communicate and that the tool itself um, is just the vehicle that I am choosing or that is chosen mostly, we're going to get into it, but what's chosen to be used to deliver said message um, and I'm gonna get into it a little later when we talk about bonding and cleansing and all this stuff but for myself it has allowed me to get a deeper connection with my spirits um, so yeah let's just get into it so first I want to talk about cleansing um, cleansing in general so um, because of how I view my divination tools as as i said they are tools um i would cleanse them as i would cleanse my cell phone right to clean off any of the germs that are on it there may be you know like just lingering on it um and just to take care of it right because if this is the way i am communicating with said spirit said specific spirits within my spiritual court um then um, I need to take care of said tool, right? Polish it when I need, when you know when it needs polishing, cleansing it when it needs cleansing, um, using it in the appropriate way that it's meant to be used. That's also taking care of it. Um, in a way, it becomes sacred. It becomes something that um, either one, um, only I am allowed to touch, or either one um, that I cleanse on certain times or certain days or X, Y, Z, right? So it's something that I feel I, um, because it's a tool, I need to maintain it. Because this is the way I communicate. This is the way I can connect to the unseen. So um, as I would protect my, you know, protect my cell phone um, is how I would protect my, um, my divination tools themselves. Um, I want to make sure that this communication device is okay, right? It's clean, it's clear. Um, so that way it can do what it's meant to do. 
Uh, and the way of cleansing definitely depends on your practice. It depends on your practice. Um, some use herbs to cleanse. Um, if you're using, if your if your choice of divination tool is cards, um, you may use a smoke cleanse to cleanse the, you know, it's the deck itself. Um, but there's definitely people that use the elements, you know, water, earth, um, crystals um, to protect, to cleanse, to clear it. Uh, you know, just to make sure that the tool itself is reliable, right? To make sure that it maintains integrity and it maintains reliability, right? Some people, uh, especially those that um, use their divination tool as a way to, um, uh, to help other people, um, but this is not only exclusively for people that help other people, you should definitely, um, you know, even if you read for yourself, cleansing yourself is also a big thing. You know, there's people that before they even um, touch their divination tool, they cleanse their hands, they clean their hands, they use um, an oil um, to bless their hands, you know, uh, before even, you know, touching the tool itself. Uh, and I think this is such a very good practice in general because whether you're cleansing your deck or your tool, let's say your tool because for every person it's different, when you're cleansing your tool um, and you're cleansing yourself, um, you are clearing away any sort of lingering entity, lingering energy that may be on you, um, but also you are emptying yourself. I suppose I can only speak for myself when I say this, to be fair, but cleansing myself has become important in whether I'm divining just for myself or even divining for someone else. Cleansing myself is important because it clears away any emotion that is attached to me, right? Because when I divine, it's not about me. Even when I divine for myself, this is just the message. So to put aside, remove any of my own, any sort of will of what I want and allow room for the message itself to just be present, it requires you to make space and allow to allow the message to even be as it is you know without any influence of yourself any influence of your emotion of anything like this so cleansing yourself is just as important as cleansing the tool itself in regards going back to you know different ways to cleanse there are some that definitely use sound they use vibration to um cleanse their decks this is also linked to prayer uh certain prayers being said um over your tools um to maintain like i said their integrity their reliability to make sure that intention um is always there that intention is always there especially when you first establish it but it just maintains that connection um and also as a way of cleansing there are definitely those that will place their divination tool on a altar on a specific altar to assist with that connection with said spirit for example um but this is also when it comes to like using prayer vibration um or placing it on an altar this is also connected to bonding bonding with the tool itself now this is very interesting f for myself because it's a tool i'm gonna keep saying that it's a tool so like okay you're bond with your tool how is that even a thing um well one you you can bond in general you can bond by meditating uh you can bond with 
your tool by keeping the tool on you, right? And also by practicing. In actuality, because of how I view my deck, I'm not actually bonding with the deck itself. <laughs> I'm not. For me, I am establishing a language between me and my spirits. I'm saying this is how we are going to communicate, okay? This has a language to it, this has a symbol to it, and we are gonna use this to speak to each other. Um, so because we are establishing a language, for me, this is why meditating with um, my tool is important or why um, keeping my tool with me. Um, I've even put my tool under, you know, whatever divination tool I want, I'm needing to establish more of a, a, um, a language with, with my spirits. I would sleep with, uh, with that tool under my pillow or right next to me. Um, and that's largely because I am a big dreamer. I'm a big dreamer and setting that intention with my spirit saying, okay, let's start using this like symbology to connect with each other, uh, create meaning for each other where you can say what you need to say and I understand this symbol because of how I saw it in a dream or however however way that that you know um me connecting with you know keeping the tool on me has manifested itself so in general there are definitely times where um i have a divination tool right because i'm excited for it and the connection is weak the connection no matter how much i bond i cleanse the connection is just not there. Now, there are two reasons for me. There's two reasons why this may happen. Either one, it's me, <laughs> or two, it's them. <laughs> um, but hear me out, hear me out. Okay, position myself a little bit um, so that way the sun is not too, too strong in the video um but okay so as i was saying sometimes the connection is weak the connection is weak it's either me or them if i'm the problem if it's me right it comes it's mostly connected with my intuition so even from the very beginning right when i would when i was first even like getting into spirituality right into my own spirituality and i bought my first tarot deck uh it was the rider weight deck now the rider weight deck now i connect with it's it's completely fine but um in the very beginning it was good it was very very good for me when i was like learning for myself and learning what each card meant but it became restrictive right um because i would rely so heavily on the on the translations that other people have placed on the cards that i was not allowing any of the information that my spirits would give me um when that card will come up i wouldn't trust it right um because it's like well i'm feeling this way but I know this card means this. At the time, I wouldn't trust myself to even like trust what my intuition, what my spirits was telling me. So when that actually happened, there was a point I would read the cards for myself and I would literally feel nothing. It's like my memory was wiped of the meaning of the card. I would feel nothing when it comes to the card, it was very strange. Like it was like a fog was placed between me and the and the tarot deck. 
after a while when this kept on happening and it wasn't making sense um i realized it was because i was relying so much on other people's translations so then i started to get into playing cards because playing cards each card means something different to different people and my spirits needed me to hear them no matter what was in front of me i needed to hear them because it was always something more expansive right and so overall this is how i started to realize that i was creating um, a language with my spirits that were assisting me in this journey so when a connection is weak you know when a bond is weak between like a deck and my spirits if that language is weak once again it could be just me or also it's not the language that my soul speaks i don't have many tarot decks and particularly i have one deck that is beautiful i love this deck it is a beautiful the artistry um the intention that was put into the deck i mean wow it is i love it you won't find me using it pretty much at all to divine um because it's it's not it's not the language that my soul wants to speak um and then when it's them when it's my spirits themselves you know this is not a language that they're wanting to communicate in right i even have certain divination tools that depending on the question depending on the question my spirits i know which deck or which tool to use so with my spirits if it is them if it's them that's like this language is not a tool or a language that they are wanting to communicate in or me being like my own spirit itself it's just it's just it's just a weak connection i hope that that is making some some resemblance of sense it's good as you are bonding with your deck you're you know you're creating the language between you and your spirits with said tool it is good to ask your spirits how they would like to use the said tool i feel like that's a question that sometimes gets overlooked and it's a question that is important, especially when I am divining. I know exactly the spirits I'm connecting with because I know that this is our language to then pass on this message. And I feel like in general, to wrap everything up, I don't want this video to be too long, but to wrap everything up, if something were to happen to your tools, how would you communicate with your guides how would you communicate with your spirits and so this has been a question that i've thought about and so if something were to happen to my tools for any reason if let's say my cards or my bone set or anything if something were to happen to them to be very honest i won't feel as lost i won't feel like i i won't be able to communicate with them at all if anything i mean it'll it'll be sad i'll grieve a little bit of course <laughs> but in general i know that i can go into a forest right bring my offerings with me you know um and i can establish um a language just from the earth around me right i can establish a language um from any stick or stone that I may pick up, right? Um, because of the connection that I've made with my spirits and viewing the tool as just our language to communicate with each other. So yeah, that's some of my views when it comes to divination tools and some of the practices that I utilize for myself when I am... Um, divining for myself or divining for others um and most most importantly 
I feel as though it's helped me really lean into my intuition. It's allowed me to grow spiritually in terms of symbolism, in terms of um, knowing what I need. Like for me, I don't need a decorative card with full of symbols and everything like this. I mean, it's possible, sure, but I don't need it. I can just have a card with a word on it. But because of the communication that I've established with my spirits, it's like, oh, I know what this word means. And I know how to like uh, channel um, the information from my spirits when this card uh, you know, shows up. If I were to throw dice and a number, you know, the number 22 comes up, right? I know what two means. I know what 22 means for our language, right? If, um, you know, with my bone set, if I were to throw my bones and they fall in, in a specific way or near a specific thing or whatever, it's like, I understand the language, right? I can, I, I understand the language and I can understand because I trust my intuition. I, um, I trust um, that, that force between myself and spirit um, that allows the messages and the images to flow through. It's like, oh, okay, I see it. I feel it. And I can literally see how these things have been coming together. You know, because of this is next to this or how it's positioned or how it's turned or anything of that of that sort so um, it really allows you to trust your intuition and I think your divination tool no matter what allows you to trust your intuition versus the tool itself so yeah I hope that this um, really gave you something to contemplate to think about um, to see how you can utilize it in your own practice or even just to hear another person's opinion, you know, just to learn, you know, oh, okay, this is how, you know, this is how Quavier from Juju Time does it, you know, and it's just more information inside of your own mind and your own understanding. So, all right, beautifuls, I will see you in the next video. And thank you so much for listening to me. Truth and love. What am I saying? Okay. Oh gosh, really? I got a hole in my lip. Uh, off topic, see? I gotta stay on topic. Oh wow. That's interesting. Anyway.